Welcome to the Lead Defend Podcast, a show designed to help you grow in faith and leadership as you navigate the stages of young adulthood. We address important faith topics and provide practical life tips, helping you build up your faith as you engage a changing culture. Now, here are your hosts. Hey, this is Ryan Brock. We're here again with Lead Defend, and I'm telling you, Lead Defend is always around the corner. So it's coming up March 2nd, 2024. So excited. But until then, we got some great content to get to you. Brock, tell us about our next guest. We do. We're excited today to have Bob Snell, the Executive Director of Media and Communications here at my church at First Baptist Rogers. Bob, how are you doing today? Doing great, man. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, Bob, why don't you just start off to kind of tell us about uh, your story, um, where you're it at before you got into sure. church ministry sure. and kind of how you got here today. So I, at a, at the age of like 13, I knew God called me to be in like radio news or TV news. And so how did you know? I, I just felt that. I don't know how I knew. I just know okay. this is what he I'm looked in the mirror do. and thought I this could, I could make it on TV. So, this so, is so did I'm you look at the do. mirror and think I have a face for TV or did you look at the mirror <laughs> and say I have a voice for radio? I, I didn't think either one. I just thought I I'm supposed to communicate with people okay. somehow. Figure yeah. out how to do that. I don't know what that means or how that works. We had the old, uh, you know, the old tape recorder, little mm-hmm. cassette tape recorder. You push the buttons on and record. Yeah. And so I would have my friends come in, and we would do like almost like this, like a podcast, where we'd sit down and it was all improv, and I, <laughs> we would just make it up. Some one person would lead, and then they would say, "Okay, hey, welcome to this," and you make up a show name, and then yeah. you, I'm interviewing, you know, whoever. That's Are you awesome. saying you, so? Dr. You John invented Stabowitz. podcasting, exactly. You invented yes. podcasting. Write it down in the history books. Bob so Snell invented <laughs> podcasting. So then the other people, you know, the other guys would be like, I'd say, hey, "This is Dr. John Snabowitz, and he's the uh, elephant uh, 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 tooth uh, doctor, and I mean <laughs> dentist." And then you would, you know, and then they would ask them questions, and they would have to respond. It's incredible. It was just, uh, and then we'd great. play it. That was before social media. That's what we did back in those days. Imagine if you had things posted from that time. Like, Crazy. is it a blessing that you didn't have social media then? Do you still or? have yes. this? Do you still have the tapes? Yeah, I think I do somewhere in boxes. That's yes. awesome. It's classic, yeah, somewhere. But you yes, know, it is very a good thing we didn't have social media. <laughs> the first President days. George Bush actually recorded his memoirs on cassette tapes. Wow. Every night he would get home and he would yeah. record his day on cassette tape. That's awesome. Yeah, and so I, from that point, I got to college, studied broadcast journalism, graduated, got a job. Um, nobody would hire me because I didn't have any experience. And so you're mm-hmm. like, wait a minute, how am I supposed to get experience if nobody will hire me to give me experience? Mm-hmm. Um, Paradox. They said your college experience on your college TV news show really didn't have anything to do with the real world. Uh-oh. So you got to learn what this really means. So I started out in production making commercials for about nine months before somebody would hire me in the news. Mm-hmm. Did you write any jingles? I did not write any oh, jingles. No, man. but we did a we did a late night horror show called One Step Beyond. Wow! And so it was. Uh, I was the the guest host of the show called Count Your Fingers, mm-hmm. which is really bad. I know it was horrible. <laughs> it was terrible. But it was. Hey, the the general manager was like, Hey, you guys, just make a show and just figure out something. We just need something to fill the time on Saturday nights. And so we would play old movies, and then we would do, like, little clips in between hmm. and do the same thing I did as, huh. a, as a 12-year-old, 13-year-old. With, now I just They did didn't know TV. what experience you had. They didn't understand it. It was very popular because of the kids. It was, it was in uh, at West Point, Mississippi, which is right between uh, Starkville and yes. Ole Miss. So it was very right. popular among the college okay. uh, group uh, just because huh. it was stupid and yeah, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> That's it was awesome. dumb. So it became a a cult classic kind of thing. It was fun. It was a good time. Went from there, new station in Biloxi, Mississippi, videographer for five years there, moved into, started doing some anchoring, did sports for five years, covered Brett Favre back in his day in high school, and then in college at Southern Miss. Was at his house on draft day. Um, So, yeah, and then covered him when he was in the pros a couple times. We went from sports then back to starting the first – all sports local station show, wow. 30 minutes a day. It was a daily local sports show back in West Point again. Wow. Covering Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Southern Miss, high schools. But it was a daily. It was, for, it was, as far as I know, it was the first one in the country ever to do a daily, like, um, sports center. But yes. it was a local sports center. Yep. And we did that for about nine months. That station eventually went belly up. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, and so then I went to work for the other station in that market doing news, did their 10 o'clock newscast, reported there for a couple of years, then went to Springfield, Missouri, 
um, as their news director and anchor there and did that for 10 years. And then from there to Jonesboro, Arkansas for eight years um, as their morning news anchor and, uh, and managing editor. And then from that, God called me into ministry at Central Baptist in Jonesboro. Wow. wow. And then you've been wow. here at First Baptist Rogers 18 months. Yeah. So. It, yeah, it was about a year of struggle, you know, in that uh, – in that call, I just kept thinking, this isn't really, I mean, I've known since I was 12, mm -hmm. this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do TV news. I'm supposed to do this, and this is what I'm mm -hmm. supposed to do. And then as in that year-long process, God revealed to me that, you know, this is all the preparation for what you're going to do next, mm -hmm. wow. for what, what I've called you to do. So you're going to use all of these things you've learned now to further God's kingdom through this. Mm. And so, I mean, I'd served at churches and you know, deacon and, and, and done a lot of that over the years and, and volunteered. And so it was like, now here's your chance to take some of this and move this into um, what we're going to do. So, Bob, you've been around media for a long time, your whole career, really. Yes. And yes. you've seen media change. Dramatic. And some people have opinions, oh, this is positive, this is negative. Regardless, it's changed. And, oh, yes. and we live with it. And so how is media making positive and negative impacts on a person's Christian spiritual life? Um, that's a that's a great question, and I think you have to be so selective on what you're doing today because um, everything that's out there it used to be more of a we're going to present you with information, you make your decisions. Mm -hmm. That's not how media works today. Media today in every aspect is pushing an agenda one way or the other, and sure. so you have to recognize that. Mm. Um, and so I think you have to make sure that you're what you're taking in is biblically based content yeah um, so from the christian standpoint I mean, that's the only thing you yeah. can do and even as we were talking before we we even kind of mentioned how from the christian's perspective you know so i one of my main roles i see myself as a preacher i'm, I'm a pastor and on the the platforms of most churches when the media gets mentioned yeah. it, it's not a positive thing and so as we think about media from a christian worldview whether that's for the news or or social media, knowing that that can mean a lot of different things on various different platforms. Is there anything redemptive that we can find within media? We hear it in such negative context, but you know the Bible talks about redeeming the times. Is there a way from a Christian worldview we can redeem media? Mm. That's, a, that's a, again, another great question. It, it's, I would say yes, um, but I think it comes down to what you have in your heart. So you've mm. got to have God's Word in your heart to be able to discern Yeah what is out there because in today's world we have such easy access to create media anybody can create media with you know your phone instantly mm, and yeah. so the fact that you can do that as as we gather that ourselves and what we bring into we have to be able to discern that and so the only way we can do that is if we're hiding God's word in our heart then we're able to discern that without that some of that's going to leak in some mm -hmm. of the things that you know that shouldn't be there mm -hmm. yeah uh, so i mean it, it, like you mentioned a while like a few years ago yeah. not not that long ago the only people who had a voice in the media it required a certain level of credentials correct um you even talked a, a moment ago kind of in our show prep about not being able to find a job because they didn't yeah. consider the the experience you had enough correct. to get 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 the job so you required some yeah, Brock of, has zero prep and he's hosting a podcast <laughs> hey, hey some of exactly any of us can do it uh, so so with kind of that that wall being torn down just about anybody can can insert themselves into some type of media how should how should churches think about that mm -hmm. um, if someone's listening you know we have a lot of church leaders some of them are, are more Christians between the age of you know we say 18 and, and 28 or so but church leaders churches that are listening like do churches should they enter that field should churches take this opportunity where anyone can have a voice to have a voice in the media i i, I would say yes i would say any opportunity that we have uh, to be a light in a world full of darkness mm. we take advantage of and now what that means it's going to mean different things at different churches um, it's going to mean different things for different people uh, but yeah i think anytime we have that chance to penetrate the darkness we take it and we try to use whatever god has given us and what we have available to us now short of sin to lead people to jesus and that's what it's all about so we do whatever it takes short of sin yeah. to do that yeah and that's a distinct line what are some of the ways you've implemented both here and, and maybe at other churches to to be that light in a place that tends to be for the most part pretty dark 
I, you know, I, I think the easiest way for churches to do that is through sermon clips. I think sermon clips are one of the easiest ways because we're able to, we're taking content that has already been created on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and then we're able to take that into bite-sized pieces and, and send that to people. And because, as we know, because of social media and what we do, um, people are now, their attention span is just, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. seconds, mere seconds. Like yeah. I think the latest statistic I saw was like 17 seconds. If you, if you keep a video, if you're posting a video on social media, or you're trying to keep that under 52 seconds, I think was the latest number. Wow. So anything past that, they're not going to pay attention to. But then the average time is about 17 seconds. Yeah. So you've wow. got to try to reach people. And, it, and it's... I said it's seven. It changes. It changes yeah. every single day. Um, I'm just glad yeah. you guys are careful because we've also seen pastors get in trouble sometimes True. for the clips that they decide yeah. to post. <laughs> and and that is that, that is something. so so for us here, um, I typically choose those those clips, and mm -hmm. so I'll look at your clips before they go out. Yeah. I'll look at pastor's clips and I'll pick those clips out. I I did that this week, so I yeah. picked out eight clips for him from him because I want to make sure. You know, I'm going to be held responsible for those clips, so I want to make sure that what we have out there is is not going to get me into trouble and yeah. not going to get our church into trouble. Um, and it's hard because sometimes you know people take things out of context, right. and so sure. making sure that that clip still has context to it, mm -hmm. um, but you know doesn't mm -hmm. put you know paint the church in the wrong light. But bottom line is. We're sharing the gospel. We're sharing the Bible. We're trying to disciple people. We're trying to reach people. So whatever that means, that means. And sometimes it's offensive because the gospel is offensive. And yeah. that's what it is. How should churches and ministries look at media differently than businesses? I, you know, I think that businesses are, are trying to make money. Mm. And so they're just trying to drive people in their doors to make money. Our mission as a church is to reach the lost um, to bring them to Jesus, then to disciple them, and for them to go out and make disciples. So that's who we are. So to do that, we have to look at media in a different way. I think we have to create uh, you know, purpose for people. We have to create hope for people. Hmm. We have to create community for people. Hmm. So that's the basis of everything we do that we try to communicate through media and through social media mm -hmm. is trying to do those things, trying to, I said, there's, there's so many things on social media that don't create that. There's so much of a, of a comparison society that we live in now because of this, a microwave mentality because people want it and they want it now. Sure. Um, and so trying to help them realize that we're here to serve. We're here to reach those that are far from Christ. We're here to, you know, people that are hurting. Um, a lot of people that go through social media every day are hurting mm -hmm. and they're looking for answers or looking for something. Um, and we know we have the answer, yeah. and the answer is Jesus. And so how do we portray that in a way that draws them in, that makes them comfortable to be able to hear that message? Wow. Bob, one of the incredible things about your story is you had a full-fledged career in media and newscast, yeah. and, and then God called you to ministry. And so tell us a little bit about processing that call. I mean, because it was, it was a changing sure. career it also. It was, mm -hmm. and... and um, yeah, it was, it was one of those things where, you know, I felt like that nudge. I started feeling that nudge, and the pastor in the church that, that I was attending was like, you know, hey, I think, you know, God can use you here at our church for a different way. And I was like, yeah, I don't feel like that's my call. Here's where that is. He said, I want you to pray about it. So he prayed with me. We prayed with my wife, and we prayed over that for about a year. And I kept saying, I just don't think this is where God wow. has me. This is where God wants me. And as over that time period, God revealed to me that, He's like, you know, you've known that you're supposed to be in TV news for all these years, but what you didn't realize was that this is just the prep for you for hmm. what I need you to do wow. for the kingdom from here. Um, like I said, I'd served, I'd, you know, had done everything in a church, been a part of growing churches, building churches, church plants. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of things in a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. And so God has used all of that experience and then all the things that I learned. And as I, that first year in ministry was, crazy. I was, I mean, like I said, ministry is a whole lot harder than working in the TV news world. Hmm. And even no matter, I said, traveled around the world, interviewed presidents, I said, sports start everybody. Wow. And it, this is so much more um, demanding. It's, um, it's also, it, it, it's hard to explain, but it's, 
because it's something, you know, when you do the news, you come in, you do the news for the day, you share what happened, you tell the world, here's what we gathered, here's what we think is important for you to, to mm -hmm. know about today um, in a short amount of time. So um, you can walk away from that. When you're in the ministry, you can never walk away from that. You're wow. always, you know, worried about not, not, I guess the word is probably not the right word because mm -hmm. we're saying we don't want to worry, but you're always thinking about who can I reach? Mm -hmm. Who can I reach next? How mm -hmm. can I reach? How can I reach that lost person? How can I serve? You know, what can we do? And, and our church is an incredible servant church. Mm -hmm. um, our members have such an incredible servant heart and are willing to do whatever it takes. And, and that's, that's God's heart. And so being able to, to work through that call and then get into that position in that first year, um, I, I saw, I could, you know, over and over again, God just reinforced, okay, here's why you learned that because yeah. this is how you're going to use this now. And here's how you learn that. This is how you're going to use this to do this and to reach this and to move mm -hmm. that. And, to, mm -hmm. and so because it, it, the, the, at Central, when I started Central, there was not a position. So we created that position sure. of communications and media and then figured out how to, and I said, well, how do I, you know, what do we do? And what do we, what do we want this position to be? And wow. then our pastor said, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> he said, you just create it. Here you go. Let's make it work. Let's figure it out. Um, let's, and so, you know, it was about three or four years of trying to figure out what that position was and what it entailed. And um, at that point, we just had one staff. And then we ended up adding about four other people to that team over, wow. over a 10-year period. So if you were talking to somebody and they're in a similar boat as you, I think we're going to see this more and more. Um, people who have established careers and then they they sense or begin to experience this call or sure. as your your case was someone else called this out of you right. the person who's maybe wrestling with that man i have this established career I, I thought i knew where i was going what i was doing but now all of a sudden it seems like god's calling me to something else maybe what are a few pieces of advice um that you would give to that person pray 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 and listen <laughs> okay and listen um you know we can pray all the time but if we don't stop and and listen and try to to hear what God is telling mm -hmm. us, um, then it doesn't do us really any good. And so it was just listening to that and and not you know not thinking it's like well okay uh, that's it one thing I'm done it's over. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a process, um, and um, you know it, it all comes back to you know God's word, just you know, praying and digging through God's word and God reveals things through His word to you. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, that's kind of weird. That was creepy. Wait a minute. Yeah. You just answered, uh, uh, is this really real? And it is real. I mean, it, we know that it's real. Um, and so just just working through that process. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a quick overnight decision. Yeah. Uh, like I said, especially if you're moving from one calling where you, you know, you're absolutely sure that was your calling from God. And, and right. I was, and I right. am still to this day, to know that those 25 years were you know, where God wanted me to be. It was how he used me to be able to, to speak to groups and to share, you know, faith through who I was in a secular world. Um, and then called me to that. And at one point I thought, you know, it seems like this is a, the easy way. This is going to be the cop out. Oh, I can, I can now just slide into mm -hmm. ministry. This is the easy way out. And God quickly showed me, no, that's not the easy <laughs> way out. This is, uh, this is tough. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's, you know, the ultimate reward. Mm. Is watching people come to faith, watching wow. people be disciple, watching people serve other people is, yeah, I, I get chills thinking about it. Mm. Wow. It's awesome. It's great. That's huge. Bob, you've uh, been at the front lines of sharing some world changing stories. You've been in the aftermath of storms, hurricanes. Yeah. You've been in the messiness of people's lives yeah. in the media, and, and you've got to be on the backside of things. If you were to talk to, let's just say, a 16-year-old today, hmm. and they were asking you, hey, how should, I, how should I do this media thing? How should I engage on social media? How important should this be in my life? What advice would you give them with your years of experience in the media world? Same thing, pray and, and read God's Word. <laughs> yep. um, those are the two things you start with before you flip open the phone and start scrolling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then be careful in your scroll of who you're following. Mm. Um, and I know that you know, the algorithms sometimes put people into your feeds that you're not following. Sure. And so those things mm -hmm. can pop up and uh, just making sure you eliminate those as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, it's that, you know, what are you, it, it always comes down to what are you taking in? 
what's coming in, what is going into that heart. Mm. Uh, and so the more time you spend on things that are not of God, uh, that are not biblically based, then the more you're going to go towards the world. Um, yeah. And we know that's not where we want to be. <laughs> hmm. That's true. Bob, if you had to give a last word as you think of the transition from uh, a career to ministry and, and just following God's call, what, what would you give to this next generation? Uh, I've said it already. I think it's, it's pray and read God's word. I mean, those are the those stand the test of time. Yeah. I mean, over and over again, we keep thinking, you know, our world is so crazy. All these things we have, all these outside influences, we have the outside influence because we allow them in. Hmm. If, we, if we don't allow those things in, then they're just outside. Wow. So, um, you know, all this stuff's available. We have, um, you know, at one point we used to just have three networks on TV. Now you've got yep. thousands of mm-hmm. ways to stream, and you can stream from your phone, and you can instantly mm-hmm. find out about anything, anywhere, anytime. Yeah. So is that what you're doing? Because if you do, then you're overwhelming yourself with all of this other stuff that really doesn't mean anything. You, you've got you to dig into God's Word. Mm-hmm. You've got to dig into the influences from the Bible. And those are the things that, that really have that lasting impact on who you are and who you're going to be in the future. Um, and so it's tempting. It's easy because it's here in our hands all the time. Um, but we've got we to battle that. We've got to fight it. And it's, it's hard. It, it's, it's not going to be easy. But we know that this is where everybody is. Like I said, we all three have our phones sitting right sure. here in front of us. It pops up, it lights up. I put mine Maybe. on Do Not Disturb. Exactly. That's it. So things pop up. I Mine, didn't. Mine's <laughs> always on Do Not Disturb. Uh, but, yeah, so things, you know, are available to us all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've got to decide what's our priorities because we can literally get lost in this. And, you know, the next thing you know is 30 minutes have passed, and you're just scrolled through, and now you're up to this, and you've yeah. gone to – wherever and then you're well, wait a minute why that's did, true when yeah. did i start you know it's how did easy. i even start that to just get in the hole um, yeah and you know and, and i said so there is that also that dichotomy of a church is uh, are we helping participate in that wow are we helping mm-hmm. yep. create that because they're like oh i want to see what, what the church is doing yeah and so it so there's there's a fine line of you know hmm. are we participating in in that process of people um, pulling themselves away from from actual interaction with each yep. other, mm-hmm. actual discipleship with each other, and and allowing them to enter into a world where they can just you know, do their own thing. And, and I think what's worth saying is just about 99% of everything we do on our phone is, is to some extent temporary. Like yes. maybe you're engaging with your Bible app or, or whatever, but right. e- even some of our you know temporary conversations, everything that we engage in on our phone is temporary. But going back to what you said, prayer and the word, those things are, are eternal. Those yeah. things are, are going to last a, a lifetime, a thousand years into, you know, if you're, if we're a follower of Jesus, a thousand year into the kingdom of God, his word and communing with him um, face to face then, not, not necessarily through prayer, you know, that, that goes on forever. We're not going to even have, have reference points to yeah. all. Right. So, so again, are we spending our time in the things that really matter most? Correct. Bob? Uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge and it's a challenge for all of us because like I said, it, technology has made it easy for us. Sure, it is. Um, and that's the same with the church. I mean, mm-hmm. just what, what we've been able to do in the church technology-wise, you know, when COVID hit, we were able to, yeah. you know, bring the church to everybody, any place, any time. And mm-hmm. so that was awesome and wonderful. But at the yeah. same time, it also pulled people away from the church. And it, it was a slow mm-hmm. comeback to church for a mm-hmm. lot of people because they had that convenience and it was easy and we don't have to, I don't have to be around the people and I don't have to worry about mm-hmm. that anymore. And so um, there's a fine line as a church that we have to walk and try to figure out where, you know, well, like I said, what we use to be able to build the kingdom and how we do that. Uh, so. A couple quick are. questions. Yep. Who is the most exciting person you ever interviewed? <laughs> exciting person to interview. It's typically, it, it, which I, I did this series called Offbeat with Bob. Okay. Where I would go out and interview really and people would just send all the stuff in. Sure. And then they, I would go find these people that have just crazy collections or weird things or <laughs> whatever. And so those were typically the, the greatest interviews. That's so fun. Because they were just you know, real people every day. And then you wouldn't know it. You look at their house and you go inside their house and they have, you know, 150,000 Hot Wheels everywhere wow. in their house. Wow. And so you just, everywhere there was That's a wild. place to put a Hot Wheels car, there was a Hot Wheels car. Um, so those were probably the best um, yeah, those what was your favorite place that you covered a story? 
uh, all the you know in the sports days those were the best because you could go to all, you know bowl games you go to NBA games uh, Super Bowls I mean all that kind of stuff those were always seats. yeah and those were you know, your sidelines and so those were those and were last fun. what is the craziest story you remember reporting tornadoes so like tornado sure. stories and yeah I probably can't share the word <laughs> oh, <sure. I'm> thinking, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Bob for being with us hey this yeah. has been Ryan and Brog with Lead Defend Podcast until next time That's it for this episode of Lead Defend. To hear more episodes from the Lead Defend crew, visit absc.org slash podcasts. If you liked what you heard, rate and review us on your favorite podcast listening site. Want to learn more information about the next Lead Defend conference? Visit leaddefend.org.